Hey, this is Mr. Mitchell with another video. Today we're going to talk about conversions and thinking like a scientist. A way to understand the scientific method more is to learn to think like a scientist. We've touched upon this, but what if all the lights suddenly go out in your room? And your lights, well, they probably don't look like this. Mine don't either. But let's say they suddenly went out in your room. Do you immediately pick up the phone and call the power company? Hopefully not. Hopefully you will ask questions. Are the lights out anywhere else in the house? Are the neighbor's lights off? Is there a possible uh, weather explanation for this? Hopefully you will ask questions and try to figure out what the problem is as opposed to instantly trying to get somebody to fix it for you. If you do ask questions and you're probably thinking like a scientist. You're approaching it logically. Uh, this is very much like the critical thinking that scientists would do. Critical thinkers get more facts before jumping into conclusions. Critical thinking is used in the scientific method. Most scientists begin with observations simple things you notice. For example, if a door here were to open, say you open the door, as this person apparently is, and you hear a squeak, you might wonder what's making that noise. You can get data from other doors, open them in the house, see if they squeak also, and you can kind of form a hypothesis as to why that particular door or other doors are squeaking. Um, for example, you might could remove the doorknob. It's not a terribly hard thing to do. Remove the doorknob and see if it squeaks. But you don't need to change more than one variable at a time. If you were to remove the knob, sand the frame, and put oil on the hinges all at the same time before you try it, you won't know what caused the squeak if it stops. If you do test one variable at a time, the experiment and the experiment fails, it's not really a failure. I think we've touched on this. If you think it's the doorknob, you take the doorknob out and it still squeaks. You go with an alternate hypothesis. You don't just stop there. You're in the process of trying to figure it out. So you will come up with something else. Maybe it needs to be sanded at the bottom or something along those lines. Sometimes scientists even perform a what-if experiment without a hypothesis in mind. If they just have a question, they might perform a what-if experiment, and as a result, they might come up with a question from there. So, scientists make careful observations of all this experimental data. Using the correct tools always improves data accuracy. For example, sometimes a microscope is needed instead of a magnifying glass. Mathematics is the language of science. The language must be the same over all the world if everyone will understand the results. So as a result, we end up using the international system of units, and it's called the SI units from the French word la système international des units. Uh, I'm glad I'm not French because I struggle with the language, apparently. But anyway, we use the SI units. For example, the length unit is meter, not yards or foot. It's meter throughout the world. Uh, time is in second, which is S. Electrical current is ampere, and there are others here. Kilogram is one you may be uh, somewhat familiar with. But anyway, these SI units are based upon the metric system. And prefixes really help as far as large and small measurements. You have probably seen these prefixes before. You have the base unit, grams, liters, meters, whatever. And then you have all, all the way up to kilo and all the way down to centi and milli. Now, fortunately for people who are not as used to this, you don't use hecto, deca, and deci very much. It's almost always kilo and milli, and sometimes centi, especially when you're talking about centimeters. But anyway, uh, there are also derived units. Derived units come from the SI units, 
but they are derived through some kind of formula. For example, if you are multiplying um, the sides of a rectangle, you will have meters squared, meters on one side, meters on another. Meters squared is not the SI unit, but it is derived from that. If you're calculating velocity, you'll have meters per second. That is a derived unit as well. Conversions are simpler whenever you have these. And what we're going to do for most of the rest of the video is do some conversions and some that will actually be somewhat complicated. Let me get my pen here and get to, oh, why don't we go with red. Let's say we have 480 milliliters. Milliliters, milli is down here. And we're converting that to meters, which would be the base unit here. So you can see that milliliters is 1,000. You take 1,000 milliliters to take one meter. So let's see if I can find a space over here. Here's how you do it. Now this is one where you just might could do this in your head. But I want to show you how I'd like to get in the habit of doing it now. So when we get to the complicated ones at the end of the video, you'll be able to do that. So we have a fraction, 480 milliliters. Now to convert, we want to have a multiplication of fractions. You have to have the same, the thing you want to cancel out diagonal to it. So here's how you set it up. You have milliliters and you're converting it to liters. So how many milliliters are in one liter? There are a thousand, a thousand milliliters in one liter. So as a result, milliliters cancel out. And what you have, you multiply straight across 480. And you multiply straight across the bottom of the fraction over a thousand. Now, like I said, this is one where you probably could have just moved the decimal point three places and been okay. But, like I said, this is how you want to set things up whenever it comes time for the harder ones at the late, later in the video. Let's see if I can get this right. Yes, 480 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.428. And, of course, you have to put the unit. The unit is meters. Uh, sorry. Liters is what should have been here. So, milliliters to liters. So I will change this also. So 0.428 liters. Apologize for the change, but it's not really a change here. You'd still do everything the same way. You're getting rid of the milliliters. Remember, put it diagonal and then multiply across. So how can we do this with 300 seconds to milliseconds? So we were going from seconds to milliseconds. So let's start off with 300 seconds. Did I say 300? It's 350 seconds over 1 times. Okay, remember, you have to have the thing you want to get rid of diagonally. So you want to get rid of seconds. So you put it diagonal, not straight across, but diagonal. So you're converting to milliseconds which I think would be ms. So how many milliseconds are related in relation to second? There are 1,000 milliseconds, as you see down here, in one second. So second cancels out, and you're left with what you're converting to. So as you go straight across, pardon me as I move things around on my desk here, you would have equals 3 five, zero, and then add three more zeros to it. So I'm trying to get to the third zero. Yes, so it would be 30,500 milliseconds is exactly what you would have. So that's how you would do this. Okay, let's see down at the bottom. Oh, by the way, here are some derived units. I talked about them. Remember, they are not systems international units, but they come from them. Uh, here we have a whole bunch of millimoles. We are going to convert it all the way to kilomoles. Holy cow, that's going to be a huge one. So 
we set up this 2008 or 28 oh what is that two million eight hundred thousand I think it is set it over one okay the question is you have millimoles and you're converting it to kilomoles. So how many millimoles are in a kilomole way over here? So you've got a thousand to the basic unit, which is moles, and then a thousand more. So that is one, two, three zeros, four, five, six zeros. Now one thing you could do is convert it just to moles and then from moles to kilomoles, but it's going to end up being the same thing. How many millimoles are in a kilomole? You have one kilomole equals one with six zeros. Millimoles. That's one million millimoles. So it's just a matter of dividing this by this. Easier said than done. That is one huge problem. But we have something called scientific notation. And that ends up being, I think, 28, 2.8. Well, it's hard to tell just by looking at it. But if you have scientific notation, oh, and it's not on this page. It must be on the next video. Scientific notation will help out a lot. Okay, what about some of these where we're going more than just a straight conversion. 30 millimeters per minute to meters per second. Okay, so 30 millimeters per one minute. So let's first convert millimeters. Millimeters has to be diagonal, so it will cancel out. And let's go millimeters, we're converting to meters. Okay, so we have one meter is the same as 1,000 millimeters. So that will cancel out. But we're looking for something different than meters per minute. We're looking for meters per second. Oh, so we've got to get rid of that minute. Okay, we're getting rid of the minute. So you have to go diagonal and put minute. Now the minute will end up needing to be cut down to seconds because we're looking for meters per second. So one minute equals 60 seconds. So as a result, the minute cancels out. Notice what's going on. All that should be left is what the desired unit is, the meters per second, and that's exactly how you do it. Multiply straight across the top. That would be 30 meters. Now multiply straight across the bottom, that would be 1 times 1,000 times 60. And you don't, may not even need your calculator for that. You have 6, 0, and 3 zeros after that. Seconds. So as a result, you just punch it in the calculator. 30 divided by 60,000 seconds, and that's what you've got. Uh, looks like I'm going to run out of time on this video, so I'm not going to do this one. But what you would do, you would convert from grams to kilograms. You'd put grams opposite itself, and then put how many kilograms are in it, and you'd need to convert from hours to second. To convert from hours to second, you would need to go from hours to minute, and then from minute to second. Okay, down here we have 55 miles per hour to meters per second. Hmm, I'm trying to figure out what to do, because I'm looking at how have all these problems here and I only have about a minute that happens to be left on the video. So what I think I'm going to do is to hold off on this particular video with solving these, and I will go ahead and hope that you have learned a lot on this, and I'll try to pick these up back soon. Thanks.